Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Corey Means Business podcast and YouTube show. Today, Amelia and I wanted to do a, a little special show for you. Um, kind of expound on some of the stuff that I've got going on in, in my book, Maximize Your Now. If you haven't got your copy, make sure you get it. Uh, link will be everywhere you see this video. One of the biggest questions that I get asked, obviously, is, is what to invest in, right? So people mess with me all the time, like, what, you know, Corey, what do you like to invest in? And I have a very specific set of investments that I like. And in chapter 13 of my book, I go over specifically which investments I really like. Uh, the first one, obviously, is investing in yourself. That's always what you should invest in first. When I say invest in yourself, that means your skill set. Obviously, you have to invest in your skill set. Uh, after you invest in your skill set, where it allows you to make more money, uh, once you get making a, a good amount of income, well, now obviously you're going to start looking for ancillary investments. If you own a business, you're going to want to invest in your business, at least until obviously you've got the business growing at a nice clip. Uh, to where the business can uh, continue to expand, continue to be more profitable, make you more money. And then after that, my, my best investment, my third, my third uh, thing that I do personally, and um, just a little quick disclaimer here, this video is not financial advice of any kind. Again, I show you guys what I do. I show you what I, what I teach people to do that pay me money uh, for the free stuff. Again, I, you know, that you're watching this, uh, don't confuse this with financial advice. But again, it's what I do. And it's in my book. So uh, the third thing that I invest in after myself, my skill set, after my businesses, right? Once they're growing at the clip, I want them growing at, which is a nice steady clip. The third thing I invest in is real estate. Now, there's several ways to invest in real estate. Um, and again, unless you, you're foolish and over leverage, I don't think there's a lot of mistakes to be made in real estate when you're playing a longer game. One of the things I like to do though, because I don't like to play too long of game, you know, I like to keep my investments a little, you know, quicker, a little easier. So one of the things that I really love and have, have really had a lot of success at personally is slow flipping. Now, slow flipping is a little bit different than what you imagine when somebody says, I'm gonna you know, flip houses, right? I don't buy houses uh, and then, you know, flip them in, in 60 days, like you see on TV and, you know, make, 50 60 grand instead what i do i call it slow flipping and one of the things you one of the things when you do your personal finances and again this goes for all of us we all have to live somewhere right well living somewhere uh basically means that you're going to have expenses associated with wherever you live and that really doesn't matter if you buy the home outright for cash have a mortgage rent okay live with somebody else and, and rent you know rent from them you're gonna have expenses for, for your living, your living expenses. If you buy a house outright for cash, you still have your property taxes, you still have uh, maintenance and upkeep, you still have association fees, you have uh, homeowners insurance. I mean, so even if you bought a house for cash, it's still a lot of money uh, to be paid. So you always have an expense for your living. So early 2000s, 2001, 2002, I started to say to myself, well, if I'm gonna pay for a living, let me make extra money while I do it. So I started slow flipping homes uh, in uh, starting in the early 2000s. And what the premise is basically is that you buy a home, you live in it, okay? And then you fix it up while you live in it. And depending upon the level of, you know, how, the, the fix ups that are needed and, you know, depending upon when you get in the market, obviously there are serious, there, there's some variables in, in, in involved. But this picker house I'm taking you to today um, that's uh, actually closes uh, tomorrow. I'm going to make 300. I'm going to gross three hundred thousand dollars profit on it. Okay, as a slow flip. Um, so when I bought the home, I bought it not at this peak of the real estate market. I obviously never rec recommend buying at the peak of a real estate market. You don't need to buy buy at the bottom either. You don't got to wait for a you know a collapse of real estate to to do this. Um, you want to buy just when the market's not completely on fire. You can buy off season. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to buy during the, you know, non-peak time. Maybe you look into, you know, late winter, uh, you know, December, 
January, those are great times to buy, buy homes because any home that's on the market obviously is not gonna be getting a lot of activity. So you're not gonna have a lot of competition when it comes to buying a home uh, in, those, in those months. Um, summertime, obviously spring, summer, that's when the, the housing market really heats up. Now, you guys wanna sell in summer and it's no coincidence that it's June and I'm selling this particular home, uh, but uh, you wanna buy obviously when you can in the slower part of the season. So again, I'm in gross $300,000. We're gonna show you the house here in a minute, but I wanna tell you about it, give you a little background on it and background on why I do this and how I do it. And again, I've made you know lots and lots of money slow flipping homes. Now, the beautiful thing that I have discovered about it that's great, right, is two things. One, you gotta live somewhere anyway. Two, uh, again, you can do it over a time period that's not this crunch of, you know, I gotta get this done in, you know, a month or two months or three months, otherwise I'm gonna start losing money. Uh, you can take your time with it. Matter of fact, I like to take my time with it because uh, there are some tax benefits. And again, I'm not giving you tax advice here, consult your tax attorney or your CPA about this. But uh, one of the great things about the taxation of buying a home, fixing it up and then selling it for a profit is that you can make up to $250,000 uh, in increased equity. And as long as you hold the home for two years, guess what? Tax free. So you get you get out of that capital gains. Now, if you sell it before that, you, you, it was fine. You'll have to pay probably some capital gains uh, taxes, which aren't too bad. They're way better than income taxes. Let me tell you that. Uh, so capital gains, when you can make money through capital gains through investment, it's superior to straight income uh, uh, money because obviously you're paying dividend taxes versus income taxes, which dividend taxes are much lower. You can also offset any losses you have, etc. Again, this is not advice. This is not tax advice. I'm telling you what I do. Consult your CPA and or attorney. Um, so there's another way again that you can uh, make some tax-free money. So the process is simple. You buy the home, buy it in the slow market or buy it at a slow time of year, and you wanna buy a distressed home. I always buy a house. Again, it doesn't need major renovations, right? Again, you do wanna be careful. You get to buy some old distressed home. Obviously you're gonna run into all kinds of problems. So you don't necessarily want to buy some piece of crap house or something that needs like major renovation. So I buy something that I can live in, you know, that's comfortable to live in, but needs maybe some upgrading, needs some updating, maybe some things are in disrepair, uh, things like that. Things that you that are going to cost an arm and a leg that you can do over time while you live in the home. Uh, and again, you stretch it out over that two year period, sell in the summer in a hotter market, right? you can actually make pretty good money. Now on this picture home, I grossed $300,000. And again, it's this, this was nothing that it was a huge fixer upper. This is a home that was higher, higher uh, price point. I paid 900 grand for it. Uh, it's selling for 1.2 million. There's a 300,000 gross. Now I'm not gonna net 300,000 off of it. I want you to think that, but the gross is 300,000. Costs can vary depending upon all kinds of factors. Uh, you know, uh, in this particular home, I'm probably going to end up netting uh, 150 grand or so between the uh, the, the cost for the uh, uh, the taxes. Uh, excuse me, the cost for the uh, brokers. Tough to drive and talk. If you guys ever tried it, it's, try, it's tough to drive, talk, and film at the same time. <laughs> I really have a new appreciation for people on TV that do it seamlessly, because it is not as easy as they make it look. I'm practicing, though. I'm practicing. So whether you're hearing this on the podcast or you're seeing it on, on uh, the YouTube show, um, again, there's a link to the YouTube if you're listening to it on the podcast, uh, or you can obviously find Corey Means Business just by going to YouTube and typing in Corey Means Business to see the video. But I wanna talk a lot because obviously it's gonna be on the podcast as well. So uh, the house is in, a, is in more of an exclusive neighborhood um, and it was, a, it was a house that was bought mid, I think, uh, was built and bought mid 2007, right before the collapse. So the, the house was worth at one point, you know, close to $2 million. And obviously it fell back. The lady I bought the home from, she kind of let the house go. It was like a, a golf house for her and, and her husband. And I think they got divorced or something happened. And uh, anyway, she stopped using the home. Well, the home became uh, vacant for all intents and purposes. And so a lot of things got in distress. Also the time frame 
uh, between it was built in 2007 and now it's 2021, you know, 14, 15 years. There's a lot of things that are gonna need to be upgraded and replaced. And when we get to the home, I'll show you exactly what I did and how much it cost me and everything else. But again, it wasn't a house that was unlivable, that needed like tons of, you know, uh, huge upgrades or anything like that. I made sure that I bought a home. I was buying a home that doesn't need really a kitchen. And you can do a kitchen again, I'm not saying you can't do some of the, the, the bigger stuff. You can do kitchens, you can do bathrooms, you can do big upgrades like that. But for me, what I really like is I like to find a home that just needs like minor stuff, painting, uh, you know, maybe some, some uh, uh, you know, ACs need upgraded, roof needs redone. Um, maybe you can add a few things here and there, maybe do some built-ins. I really like using doing built-ins. I did some really great built-ins on this house I'm gonna show you. Um, and you can do like a wrought iron work, brick work, maybe you upgrade the backyard, do some planning, plant some trees, uh, you know, clean up the, the landscaping. Uh, there's lots of little things you can do yourself. Now, I'm really busy and I run several businesses, so it's tough for me to do any of this work myself. I did do a little bit of myself, but mainly I use professionals to do it. Again, which eats into my profits. If I had done it myself, I could have been more profitable, but again, I have to balance it with how much money I make at work versus taking away from work time and putting it into this. But again, for someone that doesn't make a ton of money at work like I do, doing a lot more of this stuff yourself is certainly doable. Again, if you're a really handy person, which I have to admit, I'm not that handy of a person. Um, I can do it, but I just, I don't like it. So I use professionals, which again, my costs are higher. So I gotta make sure that my gross spread is pretty big because by the time I gotta pay real estate fees and by the time I have to pay the professionals to actually do the work, it starts eating my profits. But again, I have to live somewhere anyway. So every couple of years, two or three years, I buy a home, I do the minor fix-ups, maybe I change a thing or here, there, there, uh, two there, I do landscaping, I do roofs, I do, you know, upgraded the, you know, maybe appliances once in a while, flooring, you know, things like that that you can live through. Again, full gut renovations, you're not gonna be able to live through that, right? So one of the key things with the slow flip is that you have to be able to live there as well because that's part of, you know, making the money and part of saving the money is being able to actually live in the slow flip. So we're gonna be going to the neighborhood here in a minute and I'll see you on the other side and we'll show you exactly what I did to the house and I'll tell you how much it costs so we can really break it down and you can get a good feel for it. See you in a minute. All right, guys, we're here at the house. So I can't wait to show you exactly what I did that got me to go uh, get that uh, $300,000 gross. So check it out. So this is the front of the house. Now, a few things that I did up here was I did some, some landscape, a little bit of landscape work, nothing major again, just mainly just getting it back to what it was originally. The landscaping had kind of been let go. Um, I also did a, upgraded the lighting system, did a really, really nice lighting system, uh, which I'm gonna put a link uh, to my guy, uh, Lions in there for you, anybody's interested in the lighting system. Uh, he does amazing work, did my new house too. So it's got this really cool lighting system that I did. The lights up, I mean, this whole place at night is just unbelievable. It just lights up the whole place. And in the back, it's got all colored lights and everything, which is really cool. Uh, repaired some of the rocks, you know, some of the, some of the, the riprap, uh, repaired some of this. Uh, there was a couple of bricks that needed some repairs. These are some of the lights here. You'll see they're called bollards, which are really, really cool. They got a really, really cool look to them. And they, when they, uh, when you turn the lights on, it just, it just spreads out in a pattern on the ground. I mean, it just looks phenomenal. Looks like I show you the house at night, uh, but we'll just show you in the daytime and you can go check it out at night. Uh, obviously again, landscaping, just make sure the landscape would look, look great. Like looked amazing. Uh, painting, did some painting of the home, did the roof uh, to be specific. Over here uh, on this side of the yard, there is like a uh, really nice garden area over here. Now it kind of went far back. So I actually cut that off uh, and I just shortened it up, but then I made it really, really nice. And then we did, uh, you know, redid the fountain, got the fountain going again. So you got, you know, the fountains, uh, um, pours water all the time, deer come here, all kinds of wildlife. I mean, big hawks will get in that fountain and, and be bathing and there'll be seven, eight deer around here. 
All these trees also have lights too, uh, lighting it all in them. So at nighttime, like the whole desert here is just all just all lit up. And again, anything that needed repairs, anything that looked like it, you know, wasn't up to what the house should be, uh, we went ahead and did. Again, you'd be surprised how much like just little stuff really makes a big difference. So this is the front of the house. Let me take you to the inside. I'll show you what we did in there and then I'll take you to the backyard and show what I did in there. First thing I did uh, in here was I painted everything, right? So I did a whole interior paint job. It was like a, a it was a white paint and it just kind of didn't flow. It didn't look really, really warm. So I wanted to warm it up. So I actually did a, uh, a really nice interior paint job. Did the whole thing. Uh, also refinished the, the travertine floor. Uh, the, the floor had become dirty. Uh, just obviously over time. So we went ahead and, and redid the entire uh, travertine floor. Uh, the den, it was just a room. And what I did was I went ahead and I did some really, really cool built-ins. Obviously, I'm a big proponent in being able to work from home, uh, which really came in handy this past year, right? Uh, so uh, even still though, I always build myself a really nice office in all my houses. So in this one, I went ahead and did all these built-ins. Again, it was just a room. So I had all these built-ins done, uppers and lowers. Uh, three desks, again, just so you can have different desks for different things you're doing. Uh, again, plenty of storage. This here cost me about $8,000 uh, to do the built-ins. Uh, but again, being able to work from home with that kind of ease. And again, it's built-ins I've found in these slow flips. I mean, they're just, they're a wow factor, right? So when people walk into a home, especially like a den or a living room or anything like that, and there's really nice like wood built-ins like this, um, it's just a big, big wow factor. So for eight grand, not only did I get the use out of it while I was using it, but man, it just really, really pops when you go to sell the house as well. I really recommend built-ins. They're a big, they're, they're a big deal and they're a game changer. I also did uh, all new chandeliers throughout the house. And again, these are nothing super expensive or anything like that. Uh, these are just uh, ones we got, I think, offline or from Home Depot even. They weren't, they weren't very expensive, but they look great, right? And something like that, again, it's a small touch. When I bought the house, it didn't have any chandeliers whatsoever. So this light wasn't there, that light wasn't there. In here in the, uh, the dining room, uh, we did another nice chandelier. Again, that wasn't there either. So mainly in the interior of the house, it was redoing the floor, chandeliers, and painting as well as uh, there were some appliance repairs that needed to be done. Uh, the ice maker uh, wasn't working. Uh, over here at the bar, uh, the fridge wasn't working. Fireplaces were in disrepair, they needed to be repaired. So we got everything back up to spec, everything working. Uh, and that's obviously, it wasn't uh, something that again, you can live through. Before I moved in, I didn't do the painting. I had the house painted before I moved in, but then everything else after that, we did while we lived here. Uh, so again, it, was, uh, it wasn't uh, bad whatsoever. Other than that, we'll take, so this is the main living area. I want to obviously give you the tour of the house as well. Main living area. Um, again, there's a touch up on the doors we did as well. Um, again, that fireplace was in disrepair, but we got that all fixed. So I'll bring you into the, uh, the master bedroom here. Now, the, another thing that we did uh, in the master bedroom, the lady I bought the home from, she had cut a, uh, you can see it right here, I'll show you real quick. She had cut a hole here in the wall because there's a closet on the other side here. Apparently the master closet wasn't big enough and I'll show you the master closet, it's plenty big. She had cut a hole here to walk through to the, the little closets on the other side of this wall. So I had to fill all this in obviously and you know, repaint that. So that was another, again, minor thing. It wasn't that big of a deal to do. It was like a one day job to have that done. Replaced a lot of the uh, receptacle covers, um, replaced some of the lights, uh, the canisters. And again, just you get that stuff at Home Depot. In here, we've got the master bath. Um, we did a few things here, did a real good cleaning on the, the master glass, master bath, shower glass. Did some other touch-up stuff, again, cleaned the floors. Uh, we did, uh, we changed out several of the lights in here, and including the shower. They become just discolored and just didn't look good. Um, so little things like that. Here's the master closet. I wanted to show you that she didn't think was big enough, which I had no problem with it whatsoever. It was actually pretty big, so. Why she cut the hole in the wall, I don't know. It was weird, it's the weirdest thing. But because of that, I got the house for a big discount, right? Because there were just weird things like that. I got the house for a big discount. I had to take it as is, but again, that's part of 
my strategy when I'm looking to do a slow flip is I'll take the house as is. Now, of course, when you don't buy a house at auction, when you actually buy it from a private party like I do, you can get in the home and you can inspect it and you can do a home inspection. You know, I see a lot of these people that buy houses uh, at auctions and they can't do a, a pre-inspection and they just buy it and then they get in there and obviously hope for the best. And I've seen a lot of people lose money because they are not prepared for some of the things they find in some of these older homes, right? So again, unless you got a bunch of money uh, and you're a professional at it, you know, buying a, a distressed house from, a, from an auction, um, and then getting in and seeing what surprises you have in store, I just don't recommend. When you buy private like this, uh, like about this home, again, you get it in, you get to inspect it, you get to bring your home inspector, and you you know get to make sure that there's nothing like catastrophically wrong with the home. You know, half of it isn't sinking or the roof isn't collapsing. Something's gonna really gonna, you know, obviously make it to where you couldn't move in right away because that's one of the keys to this uh, is being able to live right away in the home. Uh, but again, you can run into some serious uh, uh, di uh, financial difficulty by not being able to cover the extra repairs. So again, we're talking cosmetics. We're talking things that are just cosmetically weird or need upgrades or updating or painting or again, how easy is it to change light fixtures? Again, you get these light fixtures at Home Depot for 20 bucks. Um, the, the covers for uh, the uh, receptacles, uh, electrical outlets, again, they're a, a dollar each. So these are, and these are things you can definitely do on your own. Um, refinishing wood, uh, you know, re, restaining it or, or, or uh, revarnishing it. These are easy things. Uh, some of the other things I did too was I replaced some of the door handles. Some of the door handles uh, weren't working properly. Um, and so I replaced some of these. Again, just little weekend projects over time that you can do. And it really, really can make the big difference when you go to sell the property. So this is the master. Let me show you the rest. Good thing is we didn't have to replace the carpets or anything. Carpets were uh, in pretty good shape. They need to be clean, but that was pretty much it. Um, again, I uh, did upgrade the, the washer and dryer. This is the laundry room. I did upgrade the washer and dryer, put a new washer and dryer. I had like some old white uh, set that just didn't look very good. So I went ahead and bought this set. Again, not a lot of money, but it looks so much better. So when you go to sell the home, obviously someone comes in, they see brand new, uh, washers and dryers are like, oh wow, it really has a lot of value. Now let's uh, take a look at the backyard because this is where I did a lot of work. Okay, so out here, uh, this was one of the things that you know really helped me get a good deal when I bought the home. There was a vine that had been allowed to grow and the vine had been planted on these pillars here. And the vine, I'm sure when it originally started was fine. It just kind of wrapped around and you know looked kind of good and green and everything. But because the lady hadn't lived here, or liked it or I don't know what, what the story was exactly. It actually spread throughout the entire back uh, patio, even onto the back wall. And it's some kind of a cat's claw vine and it literally had stuck in to the ceiling. And there was all kinds of things living in there. There was birds, there was spiders, there was, I mean, we're in the middle of the desert here, so you can imagine uh, there was all kinds of crazy stuff living on the back patio. And I don't know if you wanna be barbecuing and be out here and eating and having all kinds of wildlife, you know, feet above your head. I didn't, so one of the things I did was I had the vines all removed and there was a lot of damage to this stone here uh, when that occurred. So we, you know, I had to put it all back and I had to redo the stone. Again, no big deal. We, I think we had to buy like an extra box of stone. We could reuse the rest of it. Uh, so that was not, not uh, much for materials whatsoever. Obviously repainted it all, um, refinished a little bit of the, uh, of the ceiling here, the drywall. Other than that, it changed the entire look of the backyard just by cleaning that up. Uh, and again, it might have cost me like a thousand bucks. That, that was it. Um, now, here I did the lighting system as well. Uh, again, we got the lights here, uh, the bollard lights, and then this beautiful olive tree line right here. This whole thing lights up. There's colored lights on every tree and you can change them and make them whatever color you want. It looks absolutely amazing. And you can make them any color you want. I mean, literally there's like 50 colors to pick from. Uh, and so at nighttime, it's just spectacular. Uh, I repaired this fireplace as well. Uh, we cleaned up the spa real well, got that looking really good again. Another one of the improvements I did here was I did this wrought iron gate that goes up to the upper deck. And then I also did a wrought iron topper here 
because one of the one of the flaws with the home was that you could see your neighbor's backyard, which is never cool, right? I like my neighbors, but I didn't want to look in their backyard. So I did this wrought iron topper that runs the whole back wall so I could get more privacy. Now you can see you can't see in the neighbor's yard whatsoever. So that worked out really, really good. And other than that, again, same thing, just repairs, anything that didn't look right. Uh, we did, we dug up some of the old plants and replanted or cleaned them up where we could, got them back into to, uh, to looking really good. Uh, some minor repairs on the gate. Um, and again, back here in the backyard, you know, the lighting system cost me about 20 grand, um, thousand bucks to clean the back porch, another, you know, thousand to paint and, and, and to redo the rock. So a couple thousand there, uh, again, about 8,000 for the wrought iron work. So when you look about the lighting and the wrought iron work and, and, and some of the other repairs, we're only talking like maybe, you know, 30 grand, 35 grand in the backyard, uh, another 10 grand to paint the inside of the home, uh, and another five, 6,000, I think overall, I have probably about 70, 80 grand into uh, the repairs. Again, the chandeliers, the flooring, uh, redoing the flooring, and just, you know, again, cleaning it and, and refinishing it and some other stuff. So about 70, 80 grand uh, in total cost. Now, again, the great thing about that was, was I was able to spread it over a two year period. So it wasn't like I just had to come up with the 70, 80 grand like right away. So spread out, right? And again, this is me paying professionals. I didn't do you know any of the work myself at all. I paid professionals to do it. Had I done the work myself, I probably could have saved at least half of that money, maybe even more. Uh, I could have probably maybe saved, uh, you know, uh, 50,000 of the 70, 80,000, and I could have only cost me 20 or $30,000 to actually do it if I would have done it myself. Uh, but you can see, I didn't have to do that, you know, huge stuff. I didn't gut any kitchens. I didn't gut any bathrooms. I didn't have to, you know, redo the whole home and flooring or anything like that. There was no big like fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollar upgrades. What there was was just uh, maintenance, repairs, nice little touches, additions. Again, the chandeliers, the wrought iron, the lighting system. Oh, I also had to replace all the irrigation. That was another thing I had to do too. I did all the irrigation all over again, sprouting leaks left and right. So I did that as well. Again, back here, we did, uh, you know, just landscape cleanup, just getting stuff back to way, you know, way it should look. Uh, and so there you have it. And again, we did read the roof. Uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Uh, that's pretty much it that was, was done. And because I bought it, it, bought it distressed, I was able to get a really, really good deal. I bought it in late summer after the peak. Uh, and then I'm selling it right in the, in the beginning of summer, late spring. So I'm catching the peak of the market there too. Uh, and I'm not going to uh, say that the real estate market hasn't come up a little bit in the last two years. It certainly has. It's gotten a lot hotter in the last two years. So that didn't hurt either. But I still would have made good money even if the real estate market hadn't gone crazy because the house is way more marketable now than it was when I bought it. It looks way better. It presents much better. So it's more towards what, it, what its value used to be. Uh, that's what I brought it back to. And again, I was able to do it over a two year period. I was able to spread it out. Uh, and again, so it didn't have to cost me some big chunk of money all at one time. And I was able to live here. I was able to take my time with it and just do things on my pace. And it never interfered with my job, it never interfered with my, with my day, day work. So in summation, you can see, I was able to do some pretty minor stuff overall over a longer period of time. I was able to take my time. It didn't take me away from my day job. If I had done the work myself, I could have easily done it on the weekends uh, as well. So again, it's a, it's a great way to make extra money on the side uh, as a great investment. And really because you're, you're having to live there anyway, you're saving money and you're making money. Uh, and again, it's just a great way. Again, one of the ways that I love to make money in real estate, uh, nice and easy, nice and cheap in something that you can just fit in in your life. I'm not a big proponent of going out and flipping houses. Now, again, if you're a professional and you flip houses for a living, hey, knock yourself out. But for the rest of us that are just, you know, wanting to make some more money on the side, nice and easy, uh, without having to have a lot of stress and a lot of, uh, you know, take away from our day jobs, slow flipping is really a great way to do it. This is the, I think the fifth or sixth house that I've slow flipped. Uh, maybe on a future episode here, I'll show what I'm doing at my new house. I'm going to do that one as well. Now I've got some bigger things going on, so that one's gonna be pretty cool. But again, great way to make money on the side. I've always made good money on the side uh, by doing it. And again, this is not financial advice, but it's a great way that I've made a lot of extra money. And I think uh, some people could do it too. 
All right. Hey, if you like the show today, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, I want to keep bringing value to you guys. And the more you share and the more you like, the more we can do that. See you guys on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>